Welcome participants. Now we are moving to last week in this series. In this particular week, my emphasis will be on to help you understand the potential of knitting, both weft and warp knitting in different technical applications. You have seen how complicated this knitting is. We started the entire course with learning the science, engineering, design, as well as technologies. So before we move on to different technical application of knitting, I expect you to please summarize everything because uh, there are the syllabus is completely broad in both weft and warp knitting. You have seen we covered almost seven weeks completely on weft knitting and five weeks on warp knitting. So in this particular lecture, before I move on to show you different technical application of knitting, uh, I'm going to summarize whatever we have covered so far in 11 weeks. Once you have the complete understanding of knitting, then I expect you to explore this knowledge and apply this knitting principle in other applications. So let's move on to the summary part. We have seen like weft and warp knitting are completely different in the way they are being formed. Uh, both create loops, but the formation and the principle of knitting is different in weft as well as warp knitting. In weft knitting, you have seen the, the movement of yarn was along the fabric width, which is actually called weft in case of weaving. So that's why we call this as a weft knitting, where the yarn movement is from left to right or right to left along fabric width directions. The beauty of this particular knitting is because the formation of loops is such a way that each loops get equal tension from its neighboring loops. If you see the sinkers of which is connecting a particular loop with the left and right loops, they are in equal and opposite directions. Because of that, the symmetry is formed and you will see mostly stable loops in case of weft knitting. Here also, if you see the movement of yarn, you can connect the loops of the same course. If you see particular loop, they are connected with other loops in the same course. And it is holding the loops of top and bottom by its head and feet. While in case of warp knitting, the principle is completely different. To create a warp knitting, you need multiple ends of the yarn and each end of the yarn will be making loops in either one or two columns. So if you see the formation of loops in a warp knitting, the warps move in different columns. And if you see the sinker part, actually each loop is connected with different courses, which is not the case with the weft knitting. In this, each loop is connected with neighboring loops with sinker loops. But in case of warp knitting, if you see this particular loop, one sinker loop is connecting with the loops in top course and the other sinker part is connecting the loops with the bottom course. So because of that, the sinker direction is completely different. This is why the tension in the loop is not equal and you expect these loops to be bent in certain directions. So, in this way, weft and warp knitting are fundamentally different in many aspects and we have seen in many lectures how they are formed using different technologies. In warp knitting, the movement of yarn is actually in the length direction which is called the warp. That's why it is called warp knitting. These two types of fabrics produced in knitting has different characteristics, different behaviors. That's why they are recommended to be used in different applications. Especially if you see the weft knitting, they are mostly preferred in garments, while warp knitting is mostly used in technical applications. Warp knitting usually have some importance in garments also, especially in lingri and uh, in intimate apparels. But weft knitting is mostly popular in t-shirts, sweaters, woolens. So this is how they are fundamentally different, not only 
in terms of their structure, but also in terms of their application potential. We have also seen the production uh, principle of this weft and warp knitting. So usually in weft knitting, the loops are formed by series of needles which is placed on the bed and the yarn is provided to each needle in a sequence order. While in case of warp knitting, the situation is completely different. Here also the loops are formed by different needles, but the yarn is supplied to each needle at the same time with the help of warp guide. Okay? So these are individual guides. So each guide actually provides the yarn to each individual needles at the same time. So that is why the production of warp knitting is much, much faster compared to weft knitting because in weft knitting, the sequence of loop formations in a order while in case of warp knitting, all the loops in a course are formed at the same time while in the weft knitting, the loops in a course are formed either one at a time. So either from left to right direction or right to left directions because the feeder provides the yarn in a uh, sequence order to each individual needle while in case of warp knitting, guides provide the yarn to each needle at the same time. So production capacity of warp knitting technologies is much, much faster compared to weft knitting. We have also seen the principle of loop formation. In terms of principle of loop formations, in both in weft and warp knitting, it is remain almost same because uh, we actually use the needle in the formation of loop because to form a new loops, the old loops must come out from the latch and head part and then the new yarn should be cached on and old loop should be knocked out from the needle. So this is the principle of loop formation in weft knitting. To do this function, the needle can interacts with the cams. So we have seen the principle of cams also. The path has been created and the needle but actually follows the path of the cams and due to which the loops are being generated. So the sequence is like this, so which also we have seen. So the needle starts from the resting position, then the latch gets open because the needle buds interact with the raising cam. After that, the old loop is cleared. You can see it here. So old loop is getting cleared and uh, this is due to clearing cam. Yarn is also cached after that. After yarn is cached, the needle starts moving downward or inside the bed with the help of a stitch cam. So once the needle butt interacts with the stitch cam, this is the stitch cam, it actually pulls the yarn, latch gets open and the loops get knocked out from the needle, especially the old loop and the new loops get formed here which is shown in the figure. After the formation of loop, it interacts with the up throw cam and goes back to its original resting position. So needle cam are the fundamental elements in loop formation in weft knitting and the sequence of loop formation must be followed in this way, otherwise the new loop formation will be impossible. In some machines, especially in circular knit knitting machine, we have seen also the importance of sinkers, how it helps in holding the loops, it actually helps in providing support surface for loop formation. It also provides support surface for knocking. So in some machines, sinkers also become an integral part of loop formation. So that's why needle, cam and sinker, these are the three principal elements in loop formation in weft knitting. If you see warp knitting, in warp knitting also, these three elements work together, especially in needle, guide and sinker. Uh, especially in sinker, the tricot, the machine sinker's role is very, very important. So we have seen how the guide bar does the swinging and sogging motion and provides the yarn and all those sequence of loop formation remain same as it was there in weft knitting. The old loop was cleared and then the guide bar actually provides the yarn to the needle with the help of singing and sogging motion and then old loop is knocked out from the surface and the loop is formed. So 
in the loop formation of warp knitting, what is more important for us is to understand the swinging and sogging motion of this guide. So, the guide is actually attached with the bar and this bar actually swings from the back side to the front side and also it moves laterally in the direction of needle bar to provide yarn to the needle. So, swinging motion uh, from back to front of the needle. So, this is the swinging motion, first swinging motion and then sogging motion on the front side of the needle with which is called overlap. Then another swinging motions, the swinging from front to back side of the needle and once the yarn is being supplied to the needle on the front side, now the guide bar switches its position from one needle to other needle. So, this is the four types of motions which each guide bars does during the loop formation in warp knitting and you get yarn supply for each individual needle. So, here also you can see the yarns, the old loops actually comes out and then guide bar supplies the needles in this way and then old loop is actually knocked out from the surface of the needle. So, this is important in loop formation in warp knitting and we have seen how important it is to understand the swinging and shogging motion. So, all the engineering designs of a warp knitted structures is generated if you understand the importance of overlap and underlap as well as swinging motion. So, we have given sufficient time on understanding the overlap and underlap in warp knitting technologies. Uh, in weft and warp knitting, uh, we have seen so many different types of fabric structures. So, there was some design principles which was involved. So, I expect you to understand some of the basic design principle which is actually being used continuously for designing different types of knitting. That is the beauty of knitting. Even with the same machine, you can generate 100 types of design and 1000 types of structures uh, depending on if you understand these design principles. So, if you see the weft knitted structure, uh, you need to understand the importance of loop stitch. Uh, where you have one either technical back side you are forming the loops or technical front sides you are forming the loop. The other stitch which is also important is the tuck stitch which is associated with the held loop and this uh, tuck stitch which is actually the legs are open because the, there is no old loop which is there to hold the new loops. Because of that the legs of the loops get open up. So, that is called tuck stitch. The another one is the miss stitch or the float stitch which is also very very important. Here the needle does not catch the yarn, new yarn and it still holds the old yarn. So, because of that the yarn remains floating in place of that needle. So, this is the float stitch which we have seen in the videos also. And the finally, the transfer stitch. So, in transfer stitch you actually transfer the loops of one column to adjacent columns with the help of transfer function on the machines. These are the four principles of stitches which is used anywhere in weft knitted structure. So, whatever weft knitted structure which you are looking in the market will must have either of these four types of stitches loop, tuck, float and transfer. So, here is the animation also you can understand how these are created on the machines. So, the first one the simplest one is the loops continuously being formed on each needles of the bed uh, that is called loop stitch. So, you can see all the needles are doing clearing, knocking, catching. So, this is how you create loops. In case of tuck, the needles do the catching, but it does not clear the old loop. So, this is the sequence of tuck formation. So, here the first course the loops are being formed in the second course these two needles, so second and fourth needle, they do not release the loops and this is how you created a tuck structure. Similarly, if you see the float, uh, the needle holds the old loop and does not catches the new yarn. Because of that, the yarn remains floating in the back side of the needle. So, this is how they are created. So, the first course all loops are being created. In the second course, you can see these four needles does not do anything, it is just holding the old yarn and does not do the catching. Because of that, the yarns are remaining floating on the surface. So, this is the 
float stitch formation and this is how you do the transfer stitch. So here loop from one column is actually transferred either to the left side or right side of the column. So in some of the advanced machine, especially jacquard knitting machines, you have the capability of achieving loop, tuck, float as well as transfer at each position of either front bed or back bed. So that is the beauty of technologies today. So technologies has become advanced nowadays and you can generate tuck, float, transfer or complete loop at any location in the fabric structure. So once you does that, you can generate different types of design and we have also seen uh, many, many complicated designs and networks of the yarn movements in the fabric. We have seen cable, so these are the formation of cables and uh, Arun design, pointel, so you can see these holes which are created on the fabric structure is because of the pointels. Loop transfer is also helpful in actually pointel design. Jacquard, when you are playing with different types of colors of the yarn and if you want to intentionally hide certain yarns, you can go for jacquard designs. We have seen rib which is created by two beds where the loops are alternatively technical front and back in the course. Pearl, uh, here the loops are at the technical front and back along the column. Uh, narrowing and widening also we have seen how it is important in collar designs and wherever we want to give shaping, uh, we use narrowing and widening. Partial knitting, we have seen how during the course, you can use two different types of yarns for making the loops uh, partially. Uh, we have seen bulging, we have seen link design, tuck design, float designs, cardigans, rib ripple, plain baskets. So these are just different generic names which is found in the literature and also in daily routines. But the importance of these designs comes from how you play with those four stitches, which is tuck, float and loop as well as transfer. So uh, there are many other designs also available in the market like PK, interlock, pearl, garter, checkboard, reverse, stock knit, hurdle, seeds, mosh, intarsia, fair slay. If you simply understand the sequence of knitting actions, uh, these designs will just be a name for you because you are actually you will be able to understand the principle of uh, fabric formations and once you understand the principle you would be able to generate even more complicated designs not only limited to only this type of designs. So I expect you to please follow the design principles of weft knitting. Similarly if you see warp knitted structures uh, there are many basic stitches uh, which actually comes from the overlap and underlap uh, movements of guide bar. So we have seen how you can control the overlap and underlap in opposite directions or same directions. Uh, you can also achieve only overlap uh, but no underlaps with the help of guide bar movement. You can also achieve only underlaps and no overlaps. Um, so in that case the loops will not be formed and only the floating yarns will be there at the back side of the fabric. Uh, sometimes we can also achieve neither overlaps and nor underlaps. So that is also possible with the help of guide bar movement. And sometimes we use combination of all of these to uh, generate a fabric structure. So here is some of the lapping diagram. So here if you see this is the pillar stitch. So here uh, actually there is no uh, underlap, only overlaps are there. So this is pillar stitch, open loops. So here if you see this one, um, overlap and underlap are in opposite directions. So this is closed pillar stitch. Uh, this one is actually overlap and underlaps are in opposite direction. This is called one cross one tricot, um, which is uh, in opposite direction. And this is here, you are producing closed loop. If you see this one, this is two cross one lap. So here two uh, pitch of underlap are there and one pitch of overlap is there. If you, if you see here, this is actually three pitch of underlap and one pitch of overlap. If you see here, this is four pitch of underlap and one pitch of overlap. So with the help of guide movements, it gives you the flexibility to control the shift of guide bar at the back side of the needle. 
So one pitch underlap, two pitch underlap, three pitch underlap, four pitch underlap. So if you play with different underlap pitch, you will get different designs of the fabrics and also their properties will be different. Here also if you see both the overlaps and underlaps are in same directions. So compared to this one, one cross one tricot, this is also one cross one tricot, uh, but the loops are in open state. Here the loops are in closed state. Um, we have also seen the artless designs where the combination of open loops and closed loops both are there. Sometimes we can also achieve neither overlaps and nor underlaps. In this case, the yarn will just remain in a straight fashion. So neither overlaps nor underlaps. So this is the condition. Sometimes we can only achieve underlaps, no overlaps. So only underlaps and no overlaps. So this is the conditions where we are achieving this. So you can clearly see it is, it is just up to the imagination and uh, the designer how he wants to play with the guide bar movement. So depending on the guide bar movements, you get different lapping plan and hence different types of fabrics will be generated which will be having different properties. Does the lapping plan uh, for, for different guide bars? This is done with the help of either pattern drum or pattern disc and pattern chains are uh, generated with this, the help of different chain links which is of different height. So one, we generally uh, do the sequence of these pattern chain links and we create a pattern chain and then we fix it on the pattern drum. So the follower actually follows the profile of this pattern chain and in this way we get different types of shogging motion uh, to generate different overlap and underlap distance for guide bars. So this is how you, ca you can fix the pattern chain on pattern drum and you can fix it on the machine through which the guide bar gets different motion of overlap and underlap. Uh, we have also seen we can use single guide bar and multiple guide bar. So here two guide bar motions can be achieved because there are two pattern chain. Um, we can also um, go for fully and partially threaded guides for each guide bar and we can also use single or double beds uh, of the machine in warp knitting. So there are different technologies are there and each technology has its own way of uh, controlling the shogging and swinging motion and using different types of guides uh, and their bars as well as different types of beds. So uh, this is what we have already seen. We have seen so many technologies of uh, warp knit but the design principle actually depends on the overlap and underlap variation. So in my opinion uh, whenever you see any warp knit technologies or warp knit structure or design, you only focus on the overlap and underlap sequence because that is the key for analyzing any structure of warp knits. Rest other things are very, very simple. So um, we have seen in the market usually two bar constructions are very, very important and uh, usually 70 to 80 percent of warp knit designs are basically created with the help of uh, two guide bars. Uh, which is providing yarn to the e needles and different types of generic names are given like quince cord, sark skin, lock knit, reverse lock knit, sateen, raised loop, tri coat. All these designs we have already seen in the previous lectures. Uh, we have also seen many, many complicated designs, especially the mesh designs, net designs. Um, we have also seen inlays. We have also seen single bar construction, double bar constructions. We have seen how you can control the different amount of underlaps for front bar and guide bar to control properties. So both web knitting as well as warp knitting gives you the flexibility to play with different designs of the fabrics. So in my opinion, whether you are interested in web knitting and warp knitting, you first need to understand the design principle and their science and then you go for the technology aspects. We have also uh, uh, given you some indication of how you can analyze different types of structure. For analyzing different types of structure, design notations are very, very important. So I have given you some hints of how even very complicated loop structures can be denoted by simple designs and notation followed throughout the world because you have seen the knit structures are very, very complicated. So notation is very, very useful. Uh, in analyzing these structures. So here um, we have seen box and point diagram. For example, if you see this particular 
fabric, so box diagram. So this instead of drawing the loops, you can simply draw um, the box notation. So where a front loops can be denoted by x, back loops can be denoted by 0, any float in the fabric structure can be denoted by blank box and any tuck in the structure can be denoted by dot in the box. And if there is a transfer, you can simply put the arrow of that particular loop. If it is transferred from left to right, you can put the right arrow, shifted to left direction, you can put the left arrow. So all the four stitches which is important in knitting can be denoted with the help of box and point diagrams. So here also you can see these are the box and point diagrams. So uh, these are the point diagrams where you actually see how the needles are placed on the machines because sometimes box diagram does not give the hint whether it is created on single bed or double bed. But point diagrams actually gives you the indications of how the needles are placed in realities and also whether it is a single bed fabric structure or double bed fabric structures that can also be find out with the help of point diagrams. Also the positioning of needles on each beds can be known which is called gating. So whether it, whether it is a rib gating then both the sets of the needles are shifted by half pitch with relative to each other. If they are making interlock fabrics then both the needles will be facing each other. So this is how point notations are also very, very useful. Not only it gives you the indication of fabric, but also it gives you a lot of understanding about the gating and needles arrangement of different beds, which is used in fabric development. Uh, if you see warp knit structures, warp knit structure notation is even more simpler than the weft knitted because here although the fabric structure is very, very complicated, but if you carefully analyze the movement of each yarn, uh, then um, you can relate that with the help of uh, lapping diagram and lapping plan. So in lapping diagram actually the movement of each yarn is actually given by the guide bar. So it is the guide which is used in uh, notation of warp knit structure. So the guide bar positions is placed with respect to the needles. So usually the guide is placed uh, in the space between two needles. So that guide bar position is denoted at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like that. And depending on how the guide bar is shifting from one needle to other needles, that shifting is actually shown uh, with the help of diagram or plan. So 1, 0, for example, here indicates the guide bar um, is uh, shifting from first position to zero position. So this is the first position and this is the zero position. So if the dash is coming, basically it is doing overlap. So it is shifting on the front side. Then 0 to 2. So 2 is uh, again, it is shifting from 0 position to 2 position and oblique is there. So which indicates the underlap. So the shifting can be done on the front side and back side. So if it is done on the front side, that is overlap. If it is done on the back side, this is underlap. So this is shown here. So 1 dash 0 is overlap, 0 to 2 is underlap. And then 2 to 3 is again overlap. After 3, the same sequence is repeating for this particular structure. So 1, 0, 2, 3. So 3 to 1 is again underlap. So this is how the notation is done. So only for design repeat, you have to give the lapping plan and lapping diagram. Automatically, each guides will be doing exactly the same factions and such a complicated structure is generated. The same thing is happening in double bar notation also. Here two sets of bars are used. You can see the black yarn and white yarn. So there are two bars are used. So for each bar you have to give it slapping plan and lapping diagram. So this is a double bar notation. Similarly, if you go for three bar notations, you need three lapping plan and three lapping diagram. Similarly, if you go for four bar, five bar, six bar, depending on that, you need to give different lapping notation and lapping plan. Uh, if you go for two beds design, again in the same sequence, you can give the movement of uh, lapping plan and lapping diagram um, for each guide bar uh, when it is shifting from one needle bed to other needle bed. So we have also seen how the 3D spatial fabric or pile fabric notation was done with the help of connecting guide bar, which is shifting on two beds. So uh, definitely warp knit structure is very, very complicated. but 
if you just follow the lapping plan and lapping diagram, the structure looks very simple. So once uh, the design principle is uh, and science is clear to you, you should then look for the different technologies which is available. So uh, in, in my opinion, different companies have come up with different types of patents in their fields and uh, uh, technology is nothing but it is actually helping the science and engineering. Science and engineering is more and more important in terms of product development. Technology just accelerate the production capacity. So uh, different types of technologies are available in the market in both categories, weft and warp netting. And uh, the list is very, very broad. So in this particular series of lecture, I would not be able to cover many different technologies. But in my opinion, once you have the understanding of science and uh, design, probably technology is just the cakewalk for you. So you keep looking for new technologies in the field, uh, keep looking for their functions and their um, patenting principle, how they actually generate loops, and what are their capacities. So in weft knitting, there are different types of technologies that are available. It could be flat knitting, it could be circular knitting. In flat knitting, we can go for single bed, double beds. Uh, in double beds, we can go for V bed, pearl knitting structures. Nowadays, uh, some companies have come up with four beds, um, uh, which is called seamless garment manufacturing. So now um, the knitting has advanced in such a way that uh, the entire garments can be generated with the help of four beds. So there will be no need for stitching or cutting of the uh, garment. Uh, you can simply you feed the yarn and the entire garment without any stitches will come out and you can simply wear it. So those type of machine capabilities are also coming in the market and it has four beds. So whatever I am listing is the basic one, uh, definitely in different literature and different resources. Uh, some other classifications might be given. So you should not get confused with those classifications. Rather, you should focus on the principal aspects, uh, why they are classified in that way. So every author and every researcher has their own opinion on classification of machines. In my opinion, in simple terms, when the needles are arranged on a flat bed, um, then it is called flat category. When the needles are arranged on any circular beds, either on cylinder and dial, then it comes under circular categories. So sometimes we can have single bed where one cylinder is there. Sometimes we can have double beds where two beds are there, either cylinder or dial. So we have seen rib and interlock machines also in the practical. So single and double bed flat knitting technologies I have already demonstrated in the practical. If you come up with any nearby knitting machines, I request you to please go and learn this knitting because it's very, very useful and uh, handy and you will really enjoy doing knitting um, and making fabric development. So uh, this is the single bed and with the help of cam, you can generate the fabric in one go. This is the double bed where two sets of the needles are arranged in a V bed and you can generate the fabric and the fabric is pulled uh, between the beds. Similarly, uh, you can have circular bed which is mostly automated. Uh, the production capacity is very, very faster because it's not manual. Um, and uh, automatically with the help of gear system, the cam can be rotated on the cylinder or cylinder can be rotated, cam can be fixed. So this is the single circular bed. Uh, here, uh, there was double um, circular beds, especially rib uh, setting. So here, cylinder and dials are uh, placed. So cylinder in the vertical direction, dial in the radial directions. So these are four types of technologies I demonstrated in the lab. Definitely in the market, you will find even different types of technologies. But the design principle and the science of loop formation remain same. What will be different is only the placement of the needles and what the what the different types of needles they might be using. They might be using latch needle, they might be using uh, beard needle, and they might be using uh, compound needle. So, so do not get confused. It's just the manipulation of different machine elements, and uh, but the principle of knitting remains same. Uh, similarly, in tricot category and rachel category. So, in tricot category, usually um, single bed. Uh, are there, but nowadays two bed tricot machines are coming, but I have not seen so far. Uh, although I have found some literatures where two bed tricot machines are available. Uh, in tricot, 
uh, the guide and the fabric formations actually they make 90 degree with each other. So this is uh, how uh, the sinker plays a very, very important role in fabric pulling and uh, providing the support surface for knockover and also catching the loops when the needles rise. So sinker plays a very, very important role in tricot. Uh, in rachel, uh, actually the sinker only helps in uh, holding the loops when the needles are rising. Otherwise, sinker does not provide any support surface for knockover. So in rachel, this gives you the flexibility to play with uh, two different beds of the loops. And if you carefully see the movement of yarns and the fabric, they are at around 180 degree rotation. So uh, technology wise, uh, tricot and rachels are completely different. Uh, especially rachels become very, very useful in the market uh, because uh, the sinker role is not there so much and uh, it's the trick plate in the bed which is used in um, pulling of the yarn to make the loops. So um, in, in tricot, I have shown you in the practical also, these three elements, uh, needle, sinker and guides they are placed on the machines and they do the uh, relative movements with each other for the loop formations. Here is the actual formation of the fabric. You can see it here. Uh, it is very difficult to analyze the motion if it is running at a very, very high speed. Again, if you carefully see the, the path of the yarn which is supplied to the needle and the path of uh, fabric, they are making around 90 degree. So the, the yarn is supplied and the fabric is being pulled around 90 degree. So this is the beauty of tricot. Uh, if you see the rachel, the yarn are supplied and the fabric is been pulled just beneath the bed uh, of needle and it is around 180 degree. So definitely different tensions will be there in rachel. Usually rachel machines are very, very faster compared to tricot machine. And uh, in rachel, you can play with multiple guide bars uh, because that gives you the flexibility. So this is the rachel machine. Uh, and you have seen here the role of sinker is only to hold the loops. It does not help in uh, providing support surface for uh, forming new loop or knocking old loop because new loop is getting formed between the trick plates and uh, the knockover surface is actually provided by the tricks uh, which is there on the bed itself. So this is how the rational machine is completely different from tricot machine. Uh, we have also seen the importance of double bed in formation of 3D spatial fabric or pile fabric. So here you have multiple guide bars and you have, there are two sets of bed which is there. So one needles will be making fabric from some of the guides, other set of the needles from different beds will be making another fabric with different sets of guide. And there will be some connecting guides which will be connecting the fabrics of both the beds. So basically there are two layers of the fabrics which is getting connected by the connecting layer. So here you can see there are two beds and these are different types of guides. So some guides are making fabric on either of the beds and one guide or two guides will be there which will be connecting the fabrics from both the beds. So this is how rachel machines and this type of arrangement will not be possible on tricot. So that's why rachel is very, very important in technical application because that gives you the capability because there is no sinker elements involved. The fabric can be just pulled from the backside of the bed and that gives you a lot of flexibility in fabric designing for complicated structures. So three dimensional structures can be created on rachel double bed machine. Technical application. So, so far you have seen the science of loop formation. You have seen the design aspects of different stitches in weft knitting and warp knitting. You have also seen different uh, technologies which are available for different types of fabric formations in weft knitting and as well in warp knitting. So once you have the science, engineering, design and 
technology aspects, then you can look for the knitting in different technical applications. So, in, in the next lecture, I will be giving you many case studies in which you can use the weft and warp knitted for applying it in a different technical fields. So, all of these technical applications uh, um, are not just limited to only certain fields, even you can also think for other technical ap application for these type of knit platform. So, in my opinion, the knitting just gives you a platform through which you can generate different types of products. So, for example, very recently shoe uppers are picking the momentum. So, in last four to five years, you might have seen many new industries who is making shoe uppers for the shoes are coming and you can imagine every individual on the planet makes use the shoes. Knitting is playing a very important role, not only in t-shirts, but also in shoes. Um, so, this is the very prominent application of knitting and uh, there are a lot of profit margin in this particular business and many new companies are coming out in daily basis who is making shoe uppers. Um, other key performance of knitting is to apply it on a e-textile. So, e-textile is also future. So, nowadays health monitoring is also becoming very, very important in the market and uh, where many sensors and actuators has to be integrated in the textiles. So, knitting is the only platform uh, I must say because that has lot of flexibility and also uh, the process is very simple. Because if you see the weaving, there are a lot of winding, warping, beating, sizing are there, but in knitting you just need one yarn and uh, you can do the fabric development. So, the machine can be easily modified in case of knitting to integrate fibers or smart fibers or smart sensors in the fabric structures which can be used for health monitoring. So, e-textile is very, very uh, important in coming market and it's, it will be hardly two to three years from now where you will see lot of e-textile products uh, being used by common man. Um, also, you have seen the knitting importance in sports. So, in sports also you can design uh, appropriate garments for particular sports like swims, uh, for marathons, for, for footballs. So, different types of sports garments can be engineered to give comfort to athletes as well as a sports person. So, uh, sports also is a very big field and many big companies are using knitting as a platform for generating a smart sports garment, uh, which is key for uh, the performance of these athletes. Uh, knits are also being used in composites, especially profile composites. Knits are very, very useful because it gives you sear, uh, easy sear properties and any shapes, complicated shapes can be generated with the help of composites, with the help of knit structures. Other big application of knitting is the cut resistance fabric, especially for protection. Uh, knitting has a very good sear properties, so definitely cut resistance gloves are now a key parameters in many companies to protect the workers from harsh environments. So, cut resistance uh, um, gloves are also having a big market where knitting is being used and especially weft knitted structures are mostly used in uh, cut resistance uh, gloves. Other uh, technical applications like uh, uh, mosquito nets, agro nets, packaging, uh, where also you will find mostly warp knitted structure is used. So, in, in next class, I will be discussing lot of these technical applications. I have some products with me. I will show you how um, they have used different types of weft and warp knitting engineering for designing these type of fabrics. And uh, they are really um, changing the course of these technical applications because uh, they are not only benefited, um, but they have also opened a wide varieties of scope uh, for applying knitting in many other fields. So, what is the main important thing? Because so far in last 11 weeks, you have learned a lot of knitting. Now, the uh, idea is how you will, you are going to use knitting in engineering and design. So, uh, that is why this particular week I kept as an example to show you how you can use knitting for designing different types of products. So, the core engineering principle 
for any designing of weft and warp knitted products is uh, to understand the variables of knitting because uh, you have seen how the knitting variables is uh, so important it is gives you a lot of variables uh, where you can change the yarn text material twist filaments uh, you can also uh, with the help of machine you can change the loop length of the fabric you can control the thread density you can control the gauge of the machine uh, you can also generate different types of stitches loop tuck float transfer you can use single bed uh, or double needle beds for weft knit development so whatever variables when whenever you are going to change with the help of material as well as a structural part you will get different types of fabric properties and here is the key so you need to first focus on the designing part so first you learn what are the different types of designs that are possible on knitting whatever knitting machine you are using and based on that then you relate with this fabric properties so you change the design you learn you do the analysis of those uh, fabric properties and get the understanding once those understanding is clear then you can apply for different technical applications so in weft knitting especially loop length gauge stitch and number of beds so these are the key variables once you do that uh, usually the physical properties of the fabric like gsm thread density tightness curling mechanical properties like shrinkage extensibility tensile recovery other properties like permeability porosity shear cut resistance abrasion resistance there are many properties which is linked with these variables so in my opinion before you go for technical applications you need to first understand the relation of these variables with the fabric properties and that is key to the engineering so in in research of any knitted structures you first have to do the designing and get some relationship once you have these relationship clear in your mind then ideally speaking whenever you go for any new technical applications you will be uh, clear about what type of design you will choose what type of technologies you will choose what type of materials you will choose and then you can able to also control those fabric properties similarly in warp knitting also there are lot of key variables like what type of yarn material you are choosing text twist account uh, what gauge you are using whether it is a 14 gauge 20 gauge 8 gauge uh, what are the stitch type you are using how you are varying the overlap and underlap how many guide bar you are using whether you are using single guide bar multiple guide bar like two bar three bar six bar um, guide bar threading whether you are used uh, the full threading of each guides of a bar or you have used partial threading uh, especially for net structure we are using partial threading or whether you are using single bed or double needle bed so these are some of the key variables once you once you change any of these variables definitely the physical properties mechanical properties and other properties of warp knit will change as a student if you really want to learn knitting i expect you to to see the variations and understand the importance of these variables on controlling fabric properties so the engineering of any technical products in the knitting not only just required your understanding of knitting as well as your design aspects how how much what type of different designs you can generate what type of different technological understanding you have what machines uh, capabilities what are the knowledge uh, do you have in terms of um, availability of uh, weft or warp knitting machines what are the key variables are there for designing what designs you can generate so once all of these things are understand uh, then probably you can use those variables to design different fabrics and then you can analyze those fabric properties and get some relationship so this is the key aspects in the next class i will show you how you can use some of these key aspects for generating different types of technical products and how you can also control their performance so in many fields like uh, medical in agriculture in in wearables in sports in in cut resistance in uh, in cushioning there are many applications i am going to show it in the next class so with this i am ending this particular lecture i hope 
uh, I have summarized this particular knitting domain um, in, a, in a just single lecture. But as you have seen, knitting is not so simple. So, whenever you want to thoroughly understand it, I would expect you to follow good literatures and good research papers and more important, you do the practice in the lab. Because until and unless if you will not make the fabric in the lab, all of these uh, keywords uh, will be just a keyword for you, you will not understand their importance. So, in my opinion, um, wherever you get chance to make any knit designs, please go and learn that because that is the key for engineering. So, with this, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I catch you in the next class where I will show you different technical products of knitting. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.